Hello everyone, so today I wanted to make a discussion video about the importance of video games with historical themes. So games about history or that take place in a historical setting. Personally, I find this genre of games to be incredibly important, and I just wanted to talk about why I think this, and sort of gauge what the general public thinks as well. I think the best way to go about this is to talk about the games that sort of shaped my perception of this, uh, because of course, like I've mentioned in previous videos, I was influenced by video games uh, that took place and had historical themes uh, to become a historian myself, right? So I am a historian by trade. And uh, yeah, let's talk about the games that were most important for me, and perhaps that can help sort of uh, illuminate this topic a little bit and sort of make clear what I'm talking about. So the first game I want to highlight is a game I've uh, talked about recently on the channel, that is Civilization IV. Now, all the Civilization games are great, but for me, Civilization IV has a special place, because uh, not only because it was the first Civilization game I've uh, ever played, but because of the mod scene, really unparalleled. Now, in Civilization IV, you play as, of course, historical civilizations, like uh, Carthage, the Sumerians, the Babylonians. Uh, you could even be modern civilizations, like America is there, uh, Ger the Germans, the Spanish. They're, they're all there, right? And there are several scenarios with different historical settings. There's a, a technology tree you can play from the ancient era, the, era, the Stone Age, prehistory, all the way to the future age. So uh, civilization games are quite abstract. They are more abstract than a lot of other historical games like uh, Victoria II or Europa Universalis or even Total War uh, because, you know, you have the you choose a civilization and a leader and you control that same leader, let's say Alexander the Great for the Greeks, for several thousand years. There are a lot of things in civilization that are extremely abstract or are sort of stereotypes or that don't really make total sense and are a little bit immersion-breaking if you are looking at civilization, if you're looking at the game as a pure historical simulator. It is not. It is more of a, a simulator of the development of civilization on a grander scale, right? And not necessarily just like, this is the Kingdom of France, the civilization of the Kingdom of France, and going from there. No, th uh, it is far more abstract than that, right? Uh, however... There are, of course, several mods, especially for Civilization IV, that uh, do sort of hone in on the historical aspect of civilization. So uh, a mod I talked about recently was Rise and Fall of Civilization, right? And this mod has different start dates for each civilization, so not the Americans don't start at the same time as the Babylonians, right? They start much later. Uh, and the world sort of develops in a semi-historical sort of pattern. So you have the Babylonians, India, China at the start, and then you have the Greeks appearing in 1600 BC, and then you have um, various city-states and other civilizations appearing in, in the correct historical time frames. So that was a mod that was uh, very influential for me because, you know, I became interested in a lot of these civilizations, I started reading the Civilopedia, which is the in-game encyclopedia. So I started reading about the Sumerians, Babylonians, um, ancient Greeks from uh, Civilization IV and Rise and Fall of Civilization. That was a great, really nice historical experience. And uh, you can check my video about that mod. Uh, I'll have a link here. But uh, actually, the first mod I ever played Right, the, so this is the first mod that got me on the road down, you know, understanding modding for various games, right? This mod was the Ancient Mediterranean. So the Ancient Mediterranean mod for Civilization IV is one of the classic mods, really. Uh, and uh, there, there's a link in the description. And in the, this mod focuses in on a particular era of history, right? So the ancient, it focuses on ancient Europe, the ancient Middle East, uh, and all of the civilizations uh, are... From there, so you have uh, you have the Iberians, you have the Romans, you have the Etruscans, you have uh, the Hittites, 
you have the Babylonians, you have the Egyptians, and the game sort of progresses like a regular game of Civilization IV, except all of the technologies and religions are and units are more in line with sort of the, the progression of ancient technology in ancient Europe and North Africa and the Near East. And that mod was really great uh, and really got me interested in more historical mods because, you know, in Civilization IV you have certain developments like, I don't know, Egypt could found Judaism. Uh, Babylon could found Buddhism and things of that nature. And, you know, for me, it was just a little bit much, right? A little bit too abstract. There were other great mods as well. Uh, Civ 4 itself, uh, Vanilla Civilization 4, packed in a mod called Greek World. And this was kind of like Rise and Fall of Civilization, but it was just um the sort of ancient mediterranean world and it was a very vanilla type game but you had various city states popping up at the right historical times you have various civilizations popping up at the right historical times that was a great mod as well and it really got me into games about the ancient mediterranean roman period games um and then of course uh, there's a mod i want to talk about the european middle ages mod this this one was underrated in its time and it it was underrated even later. It, it was not updated to uh, the Warlords expansion for Civilization IV, so it got kind of le left by the wayside there. But I actually was a tester for this mod back in the day. And it fo it's kind of like the Ancient Mediterranean mod, but it focused in on Europe in the Middle Ages, Europe, uh, North Africa, and the Middle East. So it was quite nice indeed. Same concept as the Ancient Mediterranean, but for the Middle Ages. Um, and that sort of leads into, you know, games that have even more of a devotion to sort of a particular time period, that have more in-depth information about particular time periods, about history in general, because it's not, it doesn't have to cover 8,000 years of history, like Civilization, where things have to be abstracted or else the game becomes, you know, something that you have to play for several months before even one game is over or one part of the game so this game that got me on track towards that is a medieval total war the first medieval total war this game truly truly was an epic experience and for four reasons really uh first thing was immersion right so civilization has pretty good immersion and you feel immersed in the sort of progression as your civilization grows as you research more texts as you construct more advanced buildings you sort of get a grasp of how civilizations develop and you know that's why civilization is even used in some universities uh in teaching about the development of modern civilization at least to a degree uh but but medieval total war really showed me how immersion and atmosphere and setting and depth can, in a particular period of time, can really, really teach you something. It can really teach you something. Now, Medieval Total War is an interesting game because it, it portrays the Middle Ages as a, the Dark Ages. It is definitely one of those uh, games that interprets Medieval Europe in the medieval Middle East, medieval North Africa, as a sort of dark age. Now, this is, of course, this has, of course, been challenged in recent years. There's a very good book about this called The Bright Ages. I highly recommend it. There will be a link in the description about how this is not exactly the case. But all that aside, all that aside, medieval total war's Im uh, immersiveness and the setting and portraying the dark reality of the politics of the Middle Ages and the war of the Middle Ages and Crusades, the G Jihad and Crusade mechanics, uh, the Mongol invasions, the sense of hopelessness. That really was an important milestone for me because, you know, civilization is not a dark game. It can't really be that dark. There are dark mods like, I don't know, Fall from Heaven 2 is sort of dark for Civilization 4 in particular. But Nothing came close to the atmosphere and immersion of medieval total war, right? And that really got me on track towards becoming a historian of the medieval period. Now, I'm not a medievalist. That's not the 
path that I ended up going down. But I still really love the Middle Ages. I I have uh, taught about the Middle Ages, and um, it is it's really because of Medieval Total War that I played when I was a kid, the first Total War game I ever played, that I got interested in the Byzantines, uh, Kiliki and Armenia, uh, the Seljuk invasions, the Mongol invasions, um, the Medieval Balkans, the Italian city-states, there's so the uh, Iberian Taifa kingdoms. There is so much there, right, that, that can really, really uh, not... I don't want to say teach people something because it's not like the gospel truth, right? There are so many inaccuracies, and I've talked about these in a lot of my videos. Again, I'll have links in the description. But it garners that interest in the period because it's in such an interesting game, because the sense of immersion and the atmosphere is so well done. It makes it seem so interesting. It really garnered that interest for me in the medieval period and got me into reading more about it, right? So Peter Brown and Late Antiquity and um, many other books. So I really owe... You know, this channel wouldn't be here if it weren't for Medieval Total War. Let's put it that way. And then you get games like Rome Total War and Medieval 2. And I think these games are even more influential than... The original medieval and that's because you know it took that sort of 2d map aspect and put it in a 3d space and i think that really um encouraged that that was really more enticing more attractive for a lot of people who were interested in the period and the history because there are so many games with flat maps the risk right and you know there's only so much interest a sort of flat kind of map can garner with sort of these chess piece type characters right? But Rome Total War brought the series into fully 3D maps and uh, battles as well, units. And the, the easily moddable maps, so creating, I don't know, a hugely detailed map of the ancient Near East for a Bronze Age mod, for example, became possible with Rome Total War. I, I, the, such mods were possible in the first medieval, but the the game was not as popular as the original Rome, and there, there just wasn't the amount of mods that we got for the original Rome uh, that we got for Medieval. Um, medieval 2 developed that even further, and, you know, mods like Europa Barbarorum really show what you can do when you combine the sort of building aspect, the progression of a game like Civilization with the depth in a particular period that a game like Total War can provide. Mods like Europa Barbarorum and Europa Barbarorum 2 for Medieval 2, and even mods like Stainless Steel, or, um, they really show what you can do with combining these two aspects. And that, that's why you know my favorite mod of all time is still Europa Barbarorum, my favorite historical game of all time, my favorite game of all time is Europa Barbarorum for the original Rome Total War. I played that. I read so many descriptions from that. Now, again, it's not the gospel truth. There are inaccuracies. But the accuracy for me is still, it's unparalleled in a game of that nature. And the thousands of people that have played Europa Barbarorum and have been inspired to learn more about history and make it more than just a hobby for some people like myself, that is so important, especially in today's society. Uh, and then, you know, I don't want to sort of write off all the other Total War games, but I want to give a spe special mention to Napoleon Total War and Shogun 2. Because uh, these are the two Warscape Total War games, uh, Total War games based on the Warscape engine, after it was changed post-Medieval 2, that I think n still nail that atmosphere and historical setting and pure Total War gameplay. Uh, that really get people interested in the period. I think Napoleon and Shogun 2 are unparalleled um, in that regard, in terms of vanilla games as well, because, you know, there are mods that do that uh, and take it further, but I think even the vanilla games of Shogun 2 and Napoleon can get even someone who's extremely disinterested in, I don't know, medieval Japan, get them interested in it, because it's so, they are so well done, 
They are so, such well-crafted experiences, even from a pure gameplay perspective and atmosphere perspective, right? And, uh, of course, the third pillar here that I want to mention, uh, there are several other honorable mentions here in terms of games that got me into history. Um, Celtic Kings is one I played so much of. Uh, I remember playing as uh, the, the Celts and trying to defeat the Roman hordes. That was a fun experience, but it not exactly. You know, it's very similar to sort of Age of Empires gameplay, and that gameplay never really grabbed me in terms of... It's just too abstract for me. I didn't really feel the progression there in Age of Empires. That's why I never really got into it. Um, though I did play a lot of similar games like Command and Conquer, but I liked those sort of... I think that those games work better with the sort of fantasy or a sort of fiction element rather than a historical element. I, I Just Age of Empires didn't grab me. Games that do grab me are Imperator and Crusader Kings 3 by uh, Paradox Games. Now, there are a lot of other Paradox games that, you know, people would recommend above these. But I recommend these two. And it's because, you know, when I talk about games that are immersive and that are atmospheric, you know, the games are also very nice to look at, right? And, you know, Crusader Kings 2, which is arguably the best of the Paradox games in terms of the modability and all the mods available and the uh, variable start dates, just amazing. The UI makes my head hurt and my eyes, so I just can't play it. Crusader Kings 3 and Imperator are games that I think nail the look of what a, how good a Paradox game can look. Now, it, these games make spreadsheets playable, and they give unparalleled historical depth, right? So, you know, uh, people are not going to know. Uh, a, 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 a layman. A layman is not going to know anything about, let's say, a medieval Byzantine prince in central Kilikia named Abul Gharib, who is actually of Armenian descent right? Unless they go in and play, let's say, Crusader Kings 3, and then uh, try to uh, look through the Byzantine vassals and um, try to see the ethnic differentiations, relig religious diversity, right? You know, I've seen so many times, so many people say, oh, you know, games about medieval Europe are more interesting than games about the medieval Middle East, because the medieval Middle East is not a diverse place. Please, please don't give me that. I'm so tired of hearing stuff like that. Um, Crusader Kings 3 and Imperator, if you, if you are interested, or, or if there are people who like Paradox games, these games, are, I think, are the two to introduce people to, uh, to Paradox, because they look very nice, and they have so much historical depth there that if, if you have a friend who's interested in history, these will get them on the path to becoming a historian. They are just really nice experiences. And, of course, the most important thing is the geography. Now, geography is so important. You know, like, I know, let's say, where Kaliningrad is on the map. And then, you know, I mention it, and then people think I'm crazy for knowing that. But why? Why is there a war on knowing things? I don't understand. Anyway, this is turning into a kind of rant video. Now, why did I make this video? Because, you know, I've been getting comments recently from fans of games like Total War Warhammer. I have nothing against Total War Warhammer. It's a game that I was interested in picking up and playing. And, uh, you know, thanks to CA for gifting it to me, I made a couple of videos about it. But, you know, wh why did I lose my interest in Total War Warhammer? It's not because... You know, I'm some sort of niche his history game purist. That's not the reason. The, the reason is because, uh, two things. Uh, I feel that, you know, there's a lot of toxicity in that community. And I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but, you know, when I make a tier list video and I don't put Warhammer among the top Total War games, and I put it under meh, because that's my opinion. I get attacked for that, right? And that's... Uh, I find that very strange. Like, 
if you don't like my list, there's a dislike button. You can't see how many people are disliking it with you, but at least I'll know. I look at those. Well, not for old videos, but for the newer videos, I look at those. Right? Now, why don't I like Total War Warhammer? Is it because I'm some niche historical game purist? No, that's not the case. I've played so many fantasy games. I've played more fantasy games than you, I bet. Um, Lord of the Rings games. Star Wars games. I've played all the Star Wars games. Believe me. I've got most of them. Um, even Re Rebel, um, Rebel Assault. Rebel Strike 2. Right, for the for MS-DOS. I played that for hours on end as a kid. I like fantasy games. Fantasy games are awesome. Command and Conquer. Um, now, uh, sci-fi games, not to mention. Why don't I like Total War Warhammer? Because I don't like the universe, right? You know, all the characters, almost all the characters are like, I don't know, uh, like I mentioned in that video about Warhammer, they, they all look like Boss Nass, the king of the Gungans. Um, and, you know, I just don't like the universe. It's not immersive to me. It doesn't have a good, it doesn't have good lore to me. It doesn't, it doesn't strike me as interesting because everything is based off such, uh, everything is based so obviously off of stereotypes of actual countries that... I don't find it interesting, right? I'd actually, I'd rather read a history book about those countries than read a fantasy about those countries with just different names so that you don't actually learn anything, right? I don't, I just don't, uh, the universe doesn't grab me. Now, you know, I'm going to try Warhammer 3, okay? I'll make a video about it. But, you know, I don't like being attacked because I'm not into the Total War Warhammer games. I just don't like them. If I'm not immersed, I get bored. So that's why I've said before, Total War Warhammer is a, a great cure for insomnia. That's just my opinion. Uh, the other reason, and the other point of backlash here against historical games, is that, you know, I've tried to get people into historical games for over a decade now, and I've been successful many times. And, you know, I've mentioned this, that... Napoleon Total War is probably the game I've been most successful with in terms of getting people into historical gaming. Uh, because, again, it's got that perfect combination of an interesting setting, excellent soundtrack, ex excellent atmosphere, right? The voices, everything is so well done in Napoleon that I've been most successful with Napoleon in getting people into the Total War series and historical gaming in general. But uh, a lot of people label these games as nerdy. And I really hate, I really hate it when, you know, there's, there's even bullying around this. Where people get bullied because they like games that are based on history, let's say, rather than games that are purely fantasy or, um, I don't know, your run-of-the-mill shooter games, right? So... I had a friend who I was trying to get him into, uh, uh, I think it was either Civilization or Total War. I think I was trying to use Shogun 2 to get him into Total War or Empire. And, you know, I was doing pretty well. But, you know, he was pressured by his friends. He was bullied by his friends. He was called a nerd. Uh, those games were nerdy. When he tried to introduce them to his friends, he was called a nerd. They said, you know, come on, just play... CSGO or whatever, Call of Duty. And, you know, that friend ended up not really getting into the game, even though he liked him. He admitted he liked him. But because he didn't really, uh, he wasn't able to find a community of friends to play with, uh, of his close friends in real life, he, he just kind of lapsed out of it and ended up not uh, continuing down that path of historical gaming. I think that's really sad because, you know, Society in general pressures people so much to get into... Me as a historian, I know this. I've been pressured. Society pressures people into thinking that the humanities is a hobby and it's not a job. 
right? Being a historian is a hobby. It's It can't be a job. You shouldn't get money for that, right? You know, I, had a fr I have a friend who's a musician, and uh, we were on a tour once, and um, he met this economist. We met this economist, and uh, he f we talked to him, and uh, this economist was from Germany. And he found out that I was a historian and my friend was a musician. And he said, you make money do you guys make money doing that? And, you know, that hurts. That hurts a person. Now, you know, I can sort of brush that off because I've heard it my whole life uh, from, you know, dentists, dental assistants, lawyers, um, all kinds, but people from a lot of different professions, doctors. And, you know, the, the world marches on towards this sort of technical future where everyone has to be a programmer or a lawyer or a doctor in order to make a decent living. And, you know, history, historians, that's... That's all not important, you know, like Fukuyama said. It's the end of history, right? Um, but it's not. It's not. I guess basically what I'm trying to say is that in a world where there's so much pressure to be a careerist and to think that professions like historian <clears throat> don't matter, it's really important to at least have ways of teaching the next generation and just people in their uh, free time something about history because, you know, in this day and age, people on, people everywhere utilize historical interpretations and aspects of history to justify tragedies and crimes. And, you know, a lot of the time, um, laymen or people don't know how to respond to these justifications. They can't argue with them properly because they don't um, have the, the background in history necessary to sort of interpret all of these events as they're going on, right? And, you know, games like Total War... Uh, paradox games as well, and to a lesser extent, civilization, I think these are really important um, because they pr make these things more accessible. Because, you know, you're not just going to pick up an atlas of world history and absorb all of it. Um, for a lot of people, that's just not possible. But learning history through a game like Total War, I think that's something that is probably a lot easier for a lot of people to absorb information from. And that's why, that's one of the reasons why I think that these games, especially from these three series I highlighted, uh, Civilization, Total War, and Paradox games, that's why I think they're so important. And it, it goes kind of beyond just being a niche historical title or a fan of niche historical games. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this rant-type video. If you enjoy videos about the historical Total Wars, other historical games, and their mods, consider subscribing to the channel, consider liking this video, and I'll see you in the next one later.